In this video, we're going to be dividing rational expressions in order to simplify them. Um, first of all, I want us to talk about dividing fractions. There's really no such thing as dividing fractions. If you are looking at a division of fractions problem, something like this, two fractions being divided, really what you need to do is turn that division into multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal. So flip that fraction upside down, reverse it, um, create a reciprocal, and now we can multiply just straight across like so. Let's keep that in mind as we are simplifying the following rational expressions. So continuing from our last video, dealing with some complex rational expressions here. It's a 2 right there. So first, rewrite your fractions using multiplication and multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead, I'm going to write x squared minus 6x plus 8 on top, and x squared minus 2x on the bottom. So let's get rid of this. And this. And now say that we are multiplying. All right, so again, back to where we were in the last video. Now that we're multiplying, we can factor, cancel out common factors, and multiply whatever's left over. So I'm going to leave 5x as it is. And I'm going to factor out a common factor here. 3 goes into both these terms, so I'm going to factor out a 3. Rewrite what's left over. Remember that you can always distribute to get back to the beginning to check to see that you did it correctly. Let's factor the top right polynomial here. Factors of the last term that add up to the middle term here. In each parenthesis, it's going to get an x. Uh, 4 and 2, if I make them both negative, they add up to negative 6, but multiply to give me positive 8. You can FOIL that to check to make sure you did it correctly. On the bottom, we just have common factors here. I can factor out an x and have an x minus 2 left over. Cancel the common factors here on top and bottom. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1, so we can get rid of that. We can get rid of the x minus 4, and we can also get rid of these x's right here. So that just leaves us with 5 over 3. That's pretty nice. Let's do another. So just like a whole number always has a denominator of 1, a polynomial always can be written over 1 if there isn't already a denominator there. So now what we got to do is change this to multiplication and flip. So now we're going to have 1 on top, 2x squared plus 3x on the bottom. Now we're multiplying. Factor first, factor this top. Here we're going to get into a polynomial where our a value here is greater than 1. So we can't just do that little shortcut that I was taking earlier. We have to think about factors now of a times c. So factors of negative 18 that add up to 7. So factors of the first and last term, the product of the first and last term, 
that add up to 7. Uh, we can do 9 and 2, and as long as we make the 9 positive and the 2 negative, then we can do that. Now we got to use our box method because a is greater than 1. First term goes in the first box, last term goes in the last box. The factors that we just found go in the remaining boxes with the variable being used in the problem. We factor going up, factor by columns here. Uh, 3 goes into both of those, that's the greatest common factor. Um, over here at this column, 2x is the greatest common factor there. And we take our sign from this box that's positive, so we're going to put a positive there. Going left by rows here, uh, 3x is the greatest common factor there. And over here, uh, just 1 is the thing that goes into both of these. And we take the sign from this box, put it in between those. So uh, we have 2x plus 3 times the quantity of 3x minus 1. That's the top left factor there. On the bottom, I'm going to leave 6, and we'll set that off to the side for just a sec. We may do something with that, I'm not sure yet. Over here, let's factor the bottom. It's just a GCF. The greatest common factor between those is x, and that would leave us with a 2x plus 3 there. So we can cancel our 2x plus 3s. And that is about it. So we're left with 3x minus 1 on top and 6x squared on the bottom. Sorry, not 6x squared. Whoops. There we go. x squared times x. Maybe you caught that. 6x cubed on the bottom. Let's do another one. This time we're going to combine things we did in our last video with our division in this video. So we're going to be doing division and multiplication in one problem. So first, take care of your division symbols. Uh, turn them into multiplications and flip the following fraction. Make it a reciprocal. So I'm going to put x plus 5 on top and 9x squared minus 25 on the bottom. Put this over one. Now factor everything we can factor here. X and x plus 5 can't be factored. That's as simplified as that gets. Um, 3x minus 5. Pretty much as simplified as that's going to get. It's really all there's left to do is factor this bottom part right here. This is actually a difference of squares. This first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and they're being subtracted, so that's a difference of squares. The square root of the first term goes first, so 3x is the square root, and the square root of the last term, and we put a minus in between. 3x and 5, and we're going to put a plus there. So that's our difference of squares factor pattern. You can FOIL to check it. Let's cancel our common factors here, 3x minus 5s, x plus 5s, and that's all we can do. Multiply now, straight across on top, all that's left is an x, and 3x plus 5 is all that's left on the bottom. So that's our final answer. Again, remember we can't cancel these x's here because we got addition going on. We can only cancel them if we have multiplication. Continue doing more examples.
So again, if they don't have denominators already, put the one on the bottom. Um, because this is being divided, we're going to change it to multiplication and flip. So now one's going on top, x minus one on the bottom, and we do multiplication now. Factor first and then multiply. Let's factor the top left over here. This is just a regular old x factor. Factors of the last term that add up to the middle term here. So if we have a negative 2 and a negative 1, that would add up to negative 3, but multiply to give us positive 2. All that's left now is cancel common factors on top and bottom and multiply. So we're just left with x minus 2. We could put it over 1 or we could just leave it like that. Um, so the crazy thing about this problem here, um, x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by, divided, yeah, that looks ugly, let me fix that. divided by x minus 1. We simplified and we said is equal to x minus 2. Dang, my 2's are really ugly today. So supposedly these two expressions should result in the same values. However, sometimes they don't. We need to be careful here. Oftentimes you will have an input that is undefined for one function, but defined for its simplified version or vice versa. Um, so can you think of inputs, values for x, um, that make this expression undefined, but are defined under this expression? Remember that anytime a denominator is zero, we have an undefined function or value. So if x is 1, that creates a 0 denominator here, and this whole expression here is undefined. But if x is 1 in this form, then it's defined. We get a positive, or not a positive value, but we get a defined value out of it. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So x cannot equal 1 here. It's undefined there. We'll have a break in our graph. This will actually be a, a vertical asymptote. Um, but it can equal 1 here, so it is defined here. So x is defined here. It's undefined over there. So that's kind of crazy how uh, simplifying a expression can give you different values. So just be careful. Um, thinking about inputs and what cannot be an input in a certain expression. All right, so that's a little bit about dividing fractions. And again, with dividing, always check to make sure that we get a defined value and not an undefined value in that denominator position. Good luck simplifying more rational expressions using division.